Don't know what you're saying You're flying higher than a plane And I'm not complaining what? Hello everyone, welcome to my channel So my name is Bethany Palmer And today's video is going to be a little bit different It's definitely a very daunting video for me to make Just because it's obviously um, about something that I'm struggling with I haven't really spoken about it much with anyone in my life. <laughs> um, I have posted about it a little bit on TikTok, but it's it's very it's a very new kind of thing that I've come to terms with because I just kind of ignored it for a while. But yeah, today I'm just going to be talking about my struggle with emotional eating, binge eating, overeating in general, could even be a little bit of food addiction. I don't know for sure. I want to start this video off by saying that I am undiagnosed. I have spoken to psychologists in the past about my disorder eating but I haven't been diagnosed with any sort of condition this is just kind of what I I suppose have diagnosed myself as or I suspect I'm struggling with yeah and just obviously a trigger warning in this one I will be talking about you know disordered eating binge eating food all of that sort of stuff so if that's not gonna make you feel very good please don't watch this video I think my goal for today's video is to be relatable to people out there struggling with similar things as well as kind of helping me I really have found talking about it helps so much so I'm really hoping this video will help me and will help others as well so I'm gonna start this video off by kind of like I guess telling you my story a little bit not super in depth just so that you can kind of get an idea like a background sort of idea of where it all came from. So back when I was like 18, 19, I was like out of high school and I have always loved food. Like I honestly have, I used to be picky when I was younger, but like I love food so much and I always, always have. And when I was 18, 19, I just kind of, um, I didn't care what I ate, which is a good thing. Like I just, I didn't think about anything that I ate or like nothing, which I mean, I wish I could be like that now. I'm envious of you know, 18, 19 year old me. Anyways, so then I think I started getting a little bit more, I guess, obsessed with food. I got a little bit more into fitness and all of that sort of stuff. And I started kind of thinking more consciously about what I was eating. And I think I, I started off by restricting my food. And to be honest with you, I'll do a whole entire, I suppose, fitness journey and disordered eating journey. I struggled with it when I was like 15, 16 as well. But yeah, I started kind of restricting my food a little bit. And then after I'd done that for a short period of time, like I said, I'm not gonna go super in depth today. Like I'm just gonna kind of be very vague. <laughs> if you want a more in depth one, just let me know. But yeah, and after kind of restricting my food, I was like, I was really hungry. And I, after months of telling myself, I can't eat this and I can't eat that and yada, yada, yada. I kind of got to a point where I, just went crazy and I just ate everything and everything that I said I couldn't have. I was like, I don't care anymore. Like I'm gonna eat whatever I want. I ate like a whole tub of ice cream in a night and all that sort of stuff. And that was just habits that I created and I kind of didn't get over for a really long time. And I did gain a lot of weight in that time. The fact that I gained weight is not the point of this video, but I did gain quite a lot of weight. And it wasn't until about mid last year that I ended up losing all of that weight over isolation because I was doing a lot of running and I was counting my calories and a lot of my videos are based around that weight loss. And yeah, I ended up losing nine kilos, which I was really proud of because I started getting my eating under control, but I had it too under control. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys here. I, it was to the point where if I didn't count my calories, I would freak out. Like I hated not knowing how many calories I was eating in a day. And when it gets to that point, you know that there's an issue. So eventually the same sort of thing happened. Like I had too much control and I told myself I couldn't eat certain foods. And then recently, very recently, and I'm talking like in the last month, I have kind of slipped back into the binge eating and I think it's because I did tell myself for so long, you can't eat that. Like with chocolate, and I love chocolate and I'll use chocolate as an example all the time. I used to tell myself, there's no way you, can, you can't have that. Like you cannot, have, you cannot eat that. <laughs> that would just be how my brain worked and I just wouldn't eat it. And then like there was a time where I had it and I was like, oh my God, I, I can eat this. Like it is okay, I'm not gonna explode and I'm not going to, gain a bunch of weight just from eating a little bit of chocolate. But you see, after I kind of got into the habit of it, I was like, oh, nothing's happening, it's fine. And I, I took it to the next extreme. And I think that's 
kind of the, the issue with binge eating. Like it's okay to eat the food that you enjoy and eat when you're hungry and have a big appetite, but binge eating is just so different to that and overeating and emotional eating. It's, it's eating like beyond the point of fullness. Like it would be to the point where I would feel like I'm going to throw up. I would sit back and wait for 10 minutes and then I'd keep eating again. And it was because I'd have these thoughts like, oh, just eat all this chocolate now because tomorrow you're not gonna let yourself eat that. So you may as well just enjoy as much of it as you can now. So yeah, just in the last like month or two months, I have found myself really losing control and it's probably the worst that it's been in terms of the binge eating. I'm gonna call it binge eating. I know, like I said, I'm not diagnosed. It just makes it easier to say, if that makes sense. So just please keep in mind, I'm undiagnosed. It's been really bad the last month and a half, two months. It's, it's to a point where I would say out of the seven days in a week, it would be five days. Like I would be eating copious amounts of food and it would always be after dinner. Even if I had, you know, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, like a pretty decent day, I would still want to binge and I'd still want to go crazy. And it's just because I love the taste of the food, like, which is also why I'm like, could be food addiction. <laughs> like it, there's just so many layers to it. And like, I'm not going to sit here and try and diagnose myself, but I don't know, like, I feel like I'm just word vomiting and I just want to, I have notes. And I'm trying to keep it in order, but like, I feel like I could talk about this topic forever. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's getting to the point where it, it is, you know, five out of the seven days of the week. And I wake up in the morning and I feel like shit. And it's not even to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to gain so much weight. At this point, that's not even what I'm concerned about. Like, I'm concerned about what I'm doing just to my health in general. Like, I wake up in the morning and I'm bloated and I feel sick and I feel disgusting all day. So, I mean, I, I have gained weight and you know, there's still that disordered eating in me that is kind of being like, oh my God, Bethany, you need to stop. But I'm trying to just push that out of the way because I know that that's not helpful. And I, and I just want to eat to be healthy. Like I don't want to damage my body. Well, when I binge eat, it's not unhealthy food. And I, I, nine times out of 10, if you were to ask anyone, it's never unhealthy food. It's always on chocolate and chips and sweets and all of that sort of stuff. Like it's never on, I don't want to say healthy and non-healthy food. It's always on food that you should have in moderation. And I don't have it in moderation, <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't want to put food into categories because every food is unhealthy if you have way too much of it, if that makes sense. So I'm going to kind of talk about where I'm at now. So I started making like this time last week, so like for a week, I've been making videos on TikTok about my binge eating and just filming what I'm eating for the day just because it keeps me accountable. And if I'm posting it on TikTok and people are commenting and being like, oh my God, you're doing amazing, like keep up the good work. It's that sort of support that has really, really, really helped me. So I've been doing that a bit and this week just gone, Monday to Thursday, like I listened to myself, I, I ate normal, like I, I ate what the required amount for me to eat and not still be hungry but not over it, if that makes sense. Like I ate a good amount for my, myself. On Friday, I put it on TikTok, but I, I binged on Friday night. And last night I had some drinks with some friends and I wouldn't say that I binged. I did overeat, but I didn't binge. I think there's definitely a difference between overeating and binging. Binging, to me at least, feels like I have a lot less control. Like when I'm binging, there is no one and nothing that can stop me. <laughs> like. When I'm like, I'm gonna eat all of that cake, I'm going to eat all of that cake. And there's nothing in my head when I'm in that moment in time. And there's not a single person that would stop me from eating that cake. Whereas overeating is just like eating past the point of fullness, but then being like, oh, okay, I'll stop now. And I think that's what I was last night. So I'm not beating myself up about it. Like it was a social thing. We're in lockdown. It was me and my roommates. And we just made like a platter and we made nachos. Like it wasn't like a, it was a social thing. And sometimes you've got to do that when you're social. I can identify the difference between the two, which I think is good for my recovery. Anyways, now I'm going to move on because I tried my very best to identify my triggers, things that trigger me to overeat and binge and emotional eat 
And I think that's really important as well in recovery. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my triggers. <laughs> so my biggest ones are nights. So every single time after I finish dinner, I'll have a little like sweet dessert and then that just like flicks something off in my brain and I'm like, keep going. <laughs> like It's like a monster in my head that's like, oh my God, I want more. Even though I let myself have those sweet treats every single night, because I know how important it is not to deprive yourself from food that you love. My brain is still just like, have more. And it's really frustrating. It's something I do struggle with literally every single night. Some nights are worse than others, but I have identified that at that point in the day, I'm really gonna struggle with it. So I do my best to avoid it, like distract myself. I still give myself a sweet treat, distract myself, have a tea, brush my teeth or something like that. That really, really, really helps me. Another thing is weekends, like Friday nights and Saturday nights, because I'm like, woo, like treat yourself, let's get takeaway. And whenever I eat out, which also brings me on to the next one, eating out, but whenever I have like takeaway or I eat out, which is usually on a weekend, <laughs> probably tied into one, that will trigger me to overeat, because I suppose I'll kind of think, well, screw it, you've already eaten all this food, you may as well eat more. And I don't know if that's an emotional thing, or if it is binge eating, or I don't know. But that's another thing. <laughs> Being hungover as well, which is just like a whole nother can of worms. Whenever I'm hungover, I'll just eat like, it's actually insane how much food I eat when I'm hungover. Like I am a bottomless pit and those days are really bad. So I'm trying to cut down on my drinking. Cause even when I'm drinking, I'll eat a lot of food too. But I think it's just because I don't have like anything in my brain telling me not to. <laughs> that whole entire part of my brain's just gone. But that's just another, like the main things are eating out, weekends and night times. They're my three main triggers. Yeah, so the ways, now I like once I've kind of said my triggers, the way that I manage it now, and I'm saying the way that I manage it, like I'm still very much in the depths of it. Like I literally binged two days ago. So <laughs> I'm not sitting here being like, this is how I overcame it. Cause I haven't overcome it. I could not be more consumed in it than I am right now. But <laughs> there are things that I do, like last week, Monday to Thursday, I wanted to binge every single one of those days, but I didn't. So I'm gonna talk about the ways that I manage it. The, my biggest thing that I do is I try and eat lots of food during the day. So if I skip brekkie or I don't end up having a lunch or anything like that, I will be ravenous by the end of the day. Like I already have like a pretty big appetite, not like huge, but like, I mean, I love my food and I've said that. <laughs> so if I skip a meal, I'll be ravenous by the end of the day and I, there's just no stopping me. Like I'll eat and eat and eat. So a really good thing that I like to do is just make sure that I have consistent meals and snacks, not just breakfast and lunch, like breakfast, lunch, and two or three snacks throughout the day before dinner. And then I'll have dinner and then I'll have another snack after dinner. So that's something that really helps me. And like I said earlier as well, I don't deprive myself from the food that I love. Like I said, I love chocolate. I probably have chocolate every single day of the week and that's fine in moderation. Like that's usually what my sweet treat is after dinner. And it might just be like a, a couple of blocks of chocolate, like not blocks, like blocks. <laughs> like a little bit of chocolate, like it's not, like it's never a huge amount, but you have to be kind to yourself and you have to still give yourself the food that you love. Like it's so important. It's good. It's food for the soul, you know? <laughs> yeah. Another thing as well that I like to do is eat really high protein. Protein is really good to keep like you satisfied. It helps keep you full. Same with complex carbs as well. They're really good to kind of, you know, keep you full, slow burning energy. And I think like I do have a few tips and I might make a whole entire video on how I manage it. But yeah, they're just a couple of them. I don't want to go super in depth into all the tips that I have just because this video would go for 5,000 million years. <laughs> There's not heaps more I want to say. Like this is just, this video is mainly for me. <laughs> I'm not trying to be selfish or anything. Like it's for you too. But talking about it helps me so much. And you know, I might be different to you and you might be able to just like handle it on your own. But for me, talking about it and being open with it and sharing my experiences with other people makes me feel not alone and makes me feel not crazy. I, I imagine a lot of people struggle with their eating, so you're definitely not alone. But having people comment on my videos and be following me because 
they want to share my journey with me, whether it's because they want to support me or they want to relate to me. It helps me so much. I feel like a lot of people are going to comment this, but yes, I am going to seek help. I'm going to go to a specialist. Like I said, I have spoken to psychologists about it before. I felt very invalidated by them, but at the same time, they weren't eating disorder specialists and I was seeing them about general mental health anyway. So, I mean, I don't, regardless, I, they didn't help. <laughs> so I want to go to an actual specialist and get help with it because I think that would be great. <laughs> and I think, you know, I'm kind of at a point where it could go one of two ways. I could go completely out of control or I could stop here and I could start getting better. I am going to get help and I'm going to use YouTube and I'm going to use TikTok as my outlet. Some people might think that I'm crazy but it helps me, so. <laughs> but yeah, I'll obviously keep you updated. If you don't follow me on TikTok, you'll probably see almost daily updates on that, if not like, you know, four or five times a week. So yeah, if you're interested in my journey, that would be amazing if you could come along and support me. I really wanna make a video on my tips to manage binge eating, as well as what I eat in a day to not binge eat later. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a huge part of my life right now, which is why a lot of my content's gonna be based around it. And it's mainly to help myself, like I've said about 4,000 million times in this video. <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking because I'm just, stop recording. I'm gonna stop rambling now. If you have any questions about anything or any requests that you want me to talk about, just comment down below and I'll reply. But yeah, don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram and please subscribe. I'm almost at 500 subscribers, which is crazy 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 um i had five no i had 499 and then i two people unfollowed me and i was like mm, so sad <laughs> but it's fine i'll get to 500 i know i will yeah thank you so much for watching this video if you're going through something similar or even if you're going through something and it's not similar just know to be kind to yourself and you know it's gonna be hard and it's gonna be shit but it will be okay <laughs> i promise it will be okay so thank you so much if you've made it to this point. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video and stick around for the next one. <laughs>